the Episcopal Church, which of course had broken off from England because, by God, we were not going to swear allegiance to the king anymore. Mm -hmm. They really wanted to emulate the Church Missionary Society in England, which is a society of the Church of England. And they really wanted to follow eminent domain in this country. It's very important. As the country moved west, the Episcopal Church said, we are going with you. And so after a lot of work and all, they incorporated as the Domestic and Foreign Missionary Society of the Episcopal Church of the United States of America. And every member was asked to subscribe. It was kind of like your pew tax. And you subscribe. Sorry, it was yeah. the pew tax, because that's how we did it in those days. And um, when you subscribed, that made you formally a missionary. And all of us were sent out into the world. And that's what we were supposed to do. And as the country moved west, the church went with it. Jackson Kemper was one of our foremost missionaries. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. a bishop who just kept going. He went out to Wisconsin, which was a fur piece from the East Coast. <laughs> he went to Missouri. I mean, all of this stuff. And he took the church. And, he, and the church realized that we were going to preach in the, in the local languages. We were going to have schools because education is an important part of being an Anglican. We were going to have churches that were built up. We were going to have circuit riding pre preachers. And if the preach, if we didn't have a regular preacher, we were publishing. We, we took the published uh, sermons from England and we demanded that these be read in the churches. We were going to have, as well, every time the circuit rider came through, there would be communion, because in some churches they would only see a priest like once a year. The rest of the time we had the offices because we had Book of Common Prayer. And so that's what linked us together. So we did the offices. All of that stuff. That's who we are as a church. Then we decided we would begin to expand overseas. We went to China. We spent a lot of time in China. Actually, deals were worked out with the Church Missionary Society in England. And we kind of took over the Caribbean, many major portions of the Caribbean. That's why Haiti is a member of the church. Hmm. And we got Latin America because it was part of our foreign policy. All of that stuff. We started to send missionaries to Africa as Africa was opening up again. You know, opening up to, to the gospel again is what I mean. People forget, we know exactly, for example, when the gospel arrived in Sudan. It's in the book of Acts. Yeah. Chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch. Right. right. Terrible mm -hmm. translation. He's not Ethiopian. He's burnt skinned. The word means burnt skinned. And he was a eunuch in the court of the Candace. Right? In the kingdom of Nuba. Okay. Nubia, I mean. Nubia. Hi, that's called Sudan. Sudan, mm -hmm. some of the mm -hmm. pharaohs of Egypt were actually mm -hmm. Sudanese. The Nile River. Right, right. Sudan owns the largest part of it. He came back, the Candace came, or the, the eunuch came back, he told the Candace, the Candace was the queen, the queen went to the king, and the king said, okay, well, you know, they all converted. And in those days, when the big boys converted, some did you, because otherwise I got to execute you. <laughs> so you will change your gods to fit my whims. <laughs> and so we're talking in the year, oh, I don't know, approximately. 38 is when Christianity came to Sudan, and it survived until the 11th, 12th century, late 1100s. You know that uh, that area called Darfur? Mm -hmm. I, I guess in this country, how do you say it? Dar, 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 Darfur. 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 It's actually Darfur. It's where <laughs> that whole area, would, one thing people don't realize is that's one of the ancient Christian kingdoms, and it survived until about the 8th century. It's a Christian kingdom before the Muslim invasion came all the way over there. Um, and the two, they're all Muslims there. Hmm. They're all hmm. Muslims. They're Arab Muslims and black Muslims, but they're Muslims. But the, the Christianity was there until the 12th century. Then it was wiped out. Then it went back in with, gosh, I just forgot his name. Broken in. Um, it went back in with the British, who got the Sudan... Who we went into Sudan to end slavery? Not uh, really good at what they were doing. Um, <laughs> Lord Kitchener ended the uprising, and I suddenly cannot think of the British general who had been in India and in China. He was a very famous British Gordon? general. Gordon? Yes, yeah. thank you. Gordon, John. If you all see, there's a movie about this, and, and, and um, we 
where Gordon dies his great death. Charlton Heston's one of the few times that Charlton Heston ever dies in a movie. Um, and then Lord Kitchener came in and put down the uprising of the Mahdi, and it became part of the Church of England. And the whole thing, I mean, this is all, politics runs a whole lot of it. Mm -hmm. But Gordon went there because he was a good churchman, and he wanted to end slavery, and he wanted to preach the gospel. And that's what he went for, and it cost him his life. And that's the tradition in Sudan. People will preach the gospel at the cost of their life. Because what do you have to be afraid of? You're going to end up having breakfast with Jesus. And we just got done saying that prayer. So, you guys want to be powerful in what you do? Go out and preach the gospel. The worst damn thing's going to happen to you is somebody's going to laugh at you. That's right. Yeah. Oh, really? Come on. We are not in third grade anymore. In third grade, it really hurt. We're grown ups. As one of my friends says, put on your big girl, girl panties. panties and get out there. <laughs>